Hello everybody and welcome to part three. If you've been following my kayak adventures you uh, Probably asleep by now, but uh, if you're still with us, uh, you'll recall in the last video we used Mr. Chumby here um, to power the brushed motor on the kayak, and it's actually been working really, really well. Uh, I've done quite a lot of missions with it. It goes for three or four hours. It runs the motor just fine. There were just two small problems. Uh, one is the one I discussed at the end of the last video where the bloody kayak won't go in a straight line. And uh, number two is, I need a bigger motor. Um, the brushed technology is just so 19 something. And, uh, and the fact is that we have lovely brushless motors available these days. I mean, we use them on our drones. We know they work well. Good controllers that don't need sensors. So I think it's time to do some investigating uh, into how we can make the thing track a bit straighter and uh, then get onto a project of increasing the power. Hmm. Right, so previously the motor was attaching here um, and that pushes from the side so you're never going a straight line. This is also horrible and cheap and nasty and as you can see it's actually bent and that's just with a little motor so I was never going to cut it for a bigger motor. So what I did was I designed and chopped up a new motor mount and uh, it's been working really well really well used the transom attachment plate from the old mount just got a bunch of square aluminium tube from Bunnings and measured it up chopped it up put it together because it pushes from the back it's actually much easier to go in a more or less straight line you just point the motor straight and then use the paddle to do use the paddle to do a little bit of drag steering or just paddle steer it. Now I think we're ready for a bigger motor. And here it is kids. Check out this bad boy. From Free RC Hobby, which also looks a lot like Free Chobby to me, but uh, China. Anyway, this is good for two kilowatts continuous apparently and it's so insanely coggy it's actually really hard to turn it by hand found this online after an extensive process of research uh, I've only got a smallish ESC to go with it this is one of those VESC um, design ESCs they're popular with e-skateboards and it's good for the amperage but Probably not very happy with 14S. They're only really rated to 12S, so we'll see what happens. I might have to just use it with a non-fully charged battery. Uh, initial idea is to just use a servo tester to control my speed. So this just arrived the other day. I'm quite excited. I'm going to fire it up now. It actually turns out I'm not going to fire it up immediately. First we need to do a lot of configuration, but Luckily there's this uh, awesome tool that's for these VESC ESCs and a couple of wizards. I'm just going to run through the stuff there and figure out what's going on. But I'll have to configure the motor then configure the control mode I assume. This looks pretty nifty. Uh, the beta flight devs could actually probably learn a little bit from uh, this particular tool. Just saying. Anyway, I'm going to get playing and we'll see if I can get this thing moving. Oh, well, that was alarming. Um, it's plugged in. There was a very big spark when I plugged that in, so I'm going to have to invest in some anti spark connectors for this thing. I've just got a couple of old 6S packs here, so we're running at 12S at the moment. This all worked in the app when I pressed the buttons, but we have yet to see if. Oh, look at that. Oh, nice. Reverse. Yeah, that's just spinning itself with its own torque. I think this is going to be a good motor. The next problem is how to actually mount it. So I've been doing some thinking. This is the existing motor. I want to keep this 
transom mount because it lets me lift it up and down. And what I'm going to try and do is find a way of attaching. There's a size comparison, by the way 200 watts versus 2 kilowatts. I have to find a way of attaching some sort of tube to the side of this. Now, they don't exactly give you any way of mounting this to anything. So, I'm going to have to get creative here. Alrighty, so, got a quick trip to Bunnings and to the auto shop. Here's what we come up with. One of these bad boys. Now, this is designed to go on the bottom of a post somewhere, on a building site, secure some sort of pillar. But what we can do, get this, put that on that, and then use a couple of big hose clamps and some 3D printed adapters and hopefully we can get a nice fit on there. So it's time to go and do some CAD work. So I'm pretty happy with that. TPU for the win. Right. Now I have to hack the head off this, figure out how to mount that. And then we can get her in the water. turned out okay. Got the uh, mounts on from the other motor. It's just these are a little bit too short. I'm going to have to lengthen those, which is annoying. I hate lengthening wires. And then I've got to sort out all this nonsense and get it in a box and get some heat sinks on that. On wood. Rightio. We're nearly in business here. So we've got the motor. It's all mounted up. I've mounted the speed controller in this little box, which is probably going to end up being a really dodgy arrangement. Heat sinks on there, um, not going to get any airflow. So it's probably going to overheat. That's okay. One thing at a time. Um, the other thing was getting this prop on was actually really, really annoying. The pins that they gave me. It's got a little pin that mounts through there and there's another pin that goes in to lock it in place. None of them fit. And this is incredibly irritating. I spent quite some time to get this on and how I've done it in the end is I actually got an M3 screw and I put it in there, screwed it in, that was working well, until the screw sheared off. So now it's in there forever, unless I drill it out. I choose to believe that this is a firm enough arrangement and it won't fly off in the middle of use. Time will tell. I didn't have to lengthen the motor wires, which is great uh, because this little box is just going to go up here like this and I'll just tie it on with some lipo straps. Got a long servo extension cable to my little servo tester, which will sit here in the pilot's seat. It's time to plug in the anti-spark XT90 which I can't do with one hand. Look, no spark. That's now active, which means it should be fully armed and operational. Hello. So the problem with the way this has been mounted is that it's now it's got some vibrations. I don't know how big a deal this is gonna be underwater. Yeah. 
That works. And there's quite a lot of air. Just being moved by the prop designed for water. And here we have it. This is just a bit of hot glue to keep this waterproof. It's not going to survive a dunking, but hopefully it's not going to get a dunking. There's one other feature I wanted to demonstrate, which I'm quite pleased about with this ESC, is that if this gets connected, disconnected, oops, instant fail safe. So when I'm on the water, I'm just going to keep a hold of this. If anything untoward happens, make sure that I take this with me off the boat and the motor will stop. And if you plug it in while well, it's cranked at full volu uh, full speed, it won't take off on you either. It waits till you zero it. So good safety features there. All right, next stop, river. overheating. The outside of my box is a little warm. It's a bit of a giveaway. Because this ESC does have thermal protection, so... Still, that was a very good first test. Just let it cool down for a bit. Just give it full throttle now that it's cooled down for a bit. moment there we pulled like 20 amps a kilowatt and this thing hold us I think we're onto something here see you in the next one there's one thing I almost forgot cheers cheers for watching I know this one was long if you made it all the way to the end you've done well this one's for you